What's your name? Zach Remillard. I'm from Dury High School. And my project was a continuation from last year. And I went out to find football receiving gloves that didn't have mm -hmm. adhesive on them. It would still yield a high coefficient of friction because that's what sticky is. And I found that material to be Dyson. And it's used in nursing homes and for seat cushions so people don't fall off, and for placemats so cups don't slide. Mm -hmm. And the way I found that was acceleration pads. Up here you can see the football was dragged over the material via a pulley with a weight at the end. And this photo gate here, it sends a beam across the spoke, and it measures the distance in between the spokes, so you can calculate the acceleration. And I ran that several times and calculated the average acceleration, and ran a series of calculations to get the coefficient of friction. And my test this year was to test these two samples, the Dyson against the Nike retail brand, head to head, in order to see who has the best coefficient of friction after several climate conditions that are experienced during a football season. And the tests I ran were a dry heat aging process, a cold aging process, and a humidity aging process. For the dry heat, I put them in an oven for 15 minutes, room temperature for five minutes. And I did that interval three times. I did that on two occasions, so like two hours of aging for an aging process. And then I put them in a freezer and did the same thing. And then in order to create humidity, it was a hot plate with a tray of water on top of it inside the oven and it created moisture throughout the air. And the way to calculate relative humidity through that was to to use the ratios between a wet bulb and a dry bulb thermometer. This wet bulb you can see on the back has a wick and that's wet with water and the water naturally wants to evaporate. But the more moisture that's in the air, the less room it has to evaporate and the closer these two readings are going to be. I was shooting for about 80% relative humidity and I ended up getting 100% each time, so that was great. Yeah, that's and the temperatures I kept these at were 41 degrees Celsius or about 105 degrees Fahrenheit because that's a practical temperature. You can feel that in August or in the beginning of the football season. And, and the freezer was negative 10 degrees Celsius or about 14 degrees Fahrenheit because once you get toward November or December, you know it's cold out here, yeah. being from the Berkshires. <laughs> and what I found was the coefficient of friction for the Dyson after the cold, after the dry heat aging process and the cold aging process was better than that of the Nike. After the humidity test, the, both of the coefficients of friction were the same. So that kind of deterred me a little bit, but it wasn't that bad because two out of the three tests proved in favor of the Dyson. And what I have here, a chemical analysis and scanning electron microscope images, I took the Williams College. I took them before the test and after the test. And this side is Dyson and this side is Nike. And what you can see is I really didn't think there would be, well there isn't much change in the chemical analysis because it's just the chemical makeup of the material. There is slight visible change though and I thought that there wouldn't be any visible change. But I was kind of happy to see that over here on the Nike, you can see before there are particles. That may be alum, it's a drying agent so it could stand up in wet weather. But at the end, after the test, there's practically nothing. It's a barren surface, which you don't want when you're ha receiving a football because the football has to slide against something even at the molecular level, and if there's nothing there, it's just going to slide across right in the slick surface. But with the Dyson, you see there's particles at the beginning and randomized particles at the end. So if they're all over the place, there's something for the football to slide against. Right. And hopefully, um, this idea will fly and I can get somebody to back me on it. And these are just crude prototypes of the glove with a spray adhesive. Just simple, ironically enough, on a Nike glove. <laughs> Find a company that'll vulcanize the material, which is just take the actual material and bond it with the back chemically or just by heat curing process so you have a seamless, perfect look. If I could do that, that would be great. Um, the way I temp measured the temperature was by this multimeter. It just simply measures the temperature outside of the air using this thermocouple at the end of the process. And I try to keep it around the same temperature and I can monitor it. During have the you process. used the gloves? The gloves that I made? Yes. No, I haven't used them. I did the research after my senior football season. Well, I started it last year. Yeah. And then I found, actually made the prototype this year. But I don't even know if they're going to be legal to use in high school yet. They would have to be examined by a board, a committee, and everything. Right. They can't even, right. gloves in high school can't even be blue. They are technically gray. So if you're holding a player, they, the rest have to be able to see it. So. And it's a distraction. But I don't know about that, but we'll see what happens <laughs> with it. Hopefully it would be legalized and you'd be able to use it on any level, even the professional and the collegiate. And maybe this idea will fly. I'm really excited about it and I had a great time doing the research.